This ballet is based on a play which was written by Jerome K. Jerome, who was the author of The Passing of the Third Floor Back. However, Helpman and his lifelong partner, Bentel, who was a stage director, in fact, at the Old Vic, came up with this idea that they would transpose the story to Glasgow and indeed to the most notorious slums there, the most notorious slums in Europe at that time. We're talking about 1944. The composer of the score was Sir Arthur Bliss, and I first became aware of it in 1958 when uh, Robert Helpman came back to the Royal Opera House and had a season of his ballets and remounted Miracle and the Gorbals. And I, as a young dancer in the company, which was by then called the Royal Ballet, I was thrilled to be in it because it was such a dramatic piece and I liked dramatic ballets very much. So. Here I was going to be a member of the Razor Gang, which actually at the end of the ballet was going to kill him. And it left a huge impression on me as a piece. Helman's performance in the ballet was so convincing that I came off into the wings, convinced that I really had been part of a group of people who had just killed a very good man. The sadness is that it has never been performed again since that last season in 1958. And I'm hoping that it's going to be possible to bring this ballet back to life. Now this would appear to be a very difficult feat, and indeed it is, because it was never filmed. It was never notated, in other words written down in a way which dancers can recreate. And in fact, we are dependent upon the extraordinary memories of the people I call the Fab Five. These are dancers who were in the production originally in 1944. I mean, the oldest of them is the only male in the group, and his name is Henry Danton, who lives now mostly in America. He is 92. Probably the one who has had the biggest impression on me, if I'm absolutely honest, is Pauline Claydon who is 89 and can remember her own role in the ballet completely. She created the role of the suicide girl, which is a very touching part and has a sad solo very early on when she's contemplating suicide before she throws herself in the Clyde. And she came up to Royal Opera House in London and taught it, this role, to one of our young dancers, a girl called Kristen who has a, um, a, a wonderful feel for character work and made a fantastic job of recreating it under the tutelage of Pauline Claydon. The extraordinary thing about this ballet is not the steps. Montaigne's think of ballets in terms of steps, but not this. This is the dramatic content, the tale which it tells, the atmosphere which it generates. A very unusual piece and therefore I think something precious which we should not lose forever and if we don't grab the opportunity now, it will be lost forever. And this will be a great shame.
so motion. It was all so motion. Yeah. The, the official, and then we put that there. Yes. And the official came through like that, yes. like that straight forward. Yes. And we pulled our hand back very gently and pulled his hand back with us. Oh, I see. So he's, he was there yep. and he, he was like this. Right. Other than this, there is no recollection of any steps in the valley at all. So therefore we're thrown back upon the memory of those dancers and photographs that we can find and notes written in the score. The other dancers of the Fab Five, as I mentioned earlier, Julia Farron, who has just actually been awarded the OBE and rightly so. Um, she gave wonderful service to our company and I remember her, she was one of my favourite dancers when I first joined. Uh, later Julia took over the role of the prostitute and performed in that also extraordinarily well. Then there's also uh, Jean Bedells, who became the ballet mistress for the company. She had a, a relatively small role originally. She was uh, the mother of the lover, the young lover. Now this role was created by a name which many people may remember, uh, Maura Shearer. Uh, sadly she is no longer with us and so uh, she cannot contribute to it. But the role which she created of the young lover was later taken over by the fifth member of my Fab Five, who was Gillian Lynn. Now the intention is that she, who was also originally in the ballet, is very happy to try to re-choreograph the ballet. Now we have to use this term very loosely because certainly it is my hope that we should be as close to the original production as possible. And by using photographs and by reading notes which are written in the score and by bringing together certain of those original performers and comparing notes from them, that we are getting surprisingly close to what we believe the original performance was like. A very successful day that we had at White Lodge, which is the junior school of the Royal Valley. This was on the 19th of November when we had about 60 people, they all came together. We tried out the various crowd scenes and the dancing in groups and the jitterbug, which was very much the dance of that time. There are all these exciting elements in this production. It's not just a very sort of serious, heavy drama by any manner of means. And so we are entirely dependent on these remarkable people to keep it alive. On the stage you've got a beggar. He's there throughout, from beginning to end. He sort of plays his fiddle when he can from time to time. He finds fag ends. He's an extraordinary character. And you've got the prostitute that was played originally by Celia Frank and then by Julia Farron. You've got the priest who rules this community with a rod of iron. Nice. And what happens? The stranger comes in. The stranger who has this extraordinary ability to raise the dead. This poor woman who's committed suicide in the Clyde. She's lying there. Everyone can see she's dead. And yet the stranger can restore her to life. The priest becomes very jealous. This man has moved in on his turf. This cannot be tolerated. And this man of the cloth, what does he do? He gets hold of the local razor gang who keep the razors in the peaks of their caps. And they are going to set upon the Christ figure. The cap comes off, the blade is there in the peak, slash slash. And Christ is yet again slaughtered.
Robert Heltman was Australian by birth, had a huge effect on the development of the Royal Ballet in its early days. And indeed, his contemporaries, who of course I've been speaking to now quite a lot, remember that he was someone who influenced the way the company developed enormously by his performances, by his choreography, by his direction. I think just Bobby left it to us to interpret really what his movements were to mean. I think, you know, a lot of it was left to one's own kind of feelings really because when he was killed at the very end and one had to run forward. All I can remember was him saying, you run forward and, and you see me and then you turn and you, you know, crumble and cry. But he didn't kind of say what kind of reaction there should be. And I mean, I just felt completely stunned by it. it, it to me, it was just, you couldn't believe what you were seeing. So there was that moment of absolutely nothing before it really, the penny dropped as to what had happened. And then to turn, and cry. Um, he never gave, gave us any kind of clue. I mean, as a suicide, I was never told why I was committing suicide, but there were slight clues in the choreography that kind of lent themselves to certain things. And, um, and then, I mean, the girls were given coupons to go and buy shoes to be in character, and they were wedge shoes that they bought. And they all had great delight in buying the most gorgeous, awful things they could find. And I think they thoroughly enjoyed that chewing gum. And uh, I think all the photographs that, you know, that are around, kind of very explicit of the characters of the, you know, people in, in that kind of setting. I was called a dot worker, I think we were called. Um, I was just one of the Court of Ballet, but I particularly enjoy that, that uh, ballet a lot, because um, I had a little little private scene with Celia, who was a prostitute, which, which I enjoyed. I mean, I always loved that sort of side of dance, you know, the acting side of dance. I always loved that. So for me, it was absolute pleasure. I thought it was marvelous. Bobby was extraordinary. I mean, he could stand. He was one of those marvelous people who could stand absolutely still and tell you a whole story. That's what it's all about. He wasn't bad as a dancer, but he was better as an actor. <laughs> you haven't heard that? He was a marvellous showman, and he just wanted to make a good vehicle for himself and make a good ballet, which he did. And I remember having a <laughs> big fight with him. Well, I didn't, have a, I didn't have a fight with him. He had a fight with me about uh, upstaging him. And I didn't know what upstaging meant at that time. And I said, what does it mean? Somebody, somebody told me. And um, what he wanted was much more realistic. He just wanted us to be people. You know, the way you stood, the way you looked, the way you moved. You had to be, because you're all rather rough people. The minister also, I mean, he's such a tight, frustrated person. I mean, he couldn't move because he was such a false person, you know, a really false character. The boys, you know, they, they're, these were heavy guys, they, you know, they worked hard, they had big muscles, big legs. They were, you know, they had a special way of walking, a special way of doing this, you know. The cl classical mind didn't actually enter into his choreography. Not the universe. Mm. No, none of those gestures. Yeah, I mean, he absolutely had no expression at all. I mean, he walked down, he had no expression, no emotion in his face at all. And that's what is so extraordinary. I mean, he was like a, a being which is not, not real. I mean, it was wonderful. <laughs> After the um, stranger had brought the suicide back to life, and uh, she was standing in front of him, sort of like this, and we were all, all in the company, were doing the Scottish dancing around them. 
yes, it was a, like a Scottish dance, and we all went went round Bobby and Pauline in a circle. So how many, how many boys and girls there were? We were boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, going round, round them. And we finished up on our knees. Da 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 di 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 da 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 da. And then Helpman sort of made a gesture and we all got up and followed them off the stage. I think everybody who's in the theatre likes it, and so I mean that's really what it's all about, isn't it? And I mean a lot of dancers like just to do the steps, but a great deal of them enjoy telling a story too. These darling kids that we, we mix together, lots of different schoolings and things like that, they aren't used to working with dramatic subtext. And you have to have that for this ballet. So I was pushing at that, that at them all day. But it isn't something you learn like fist jump. And, you know, that's mm. easier to learn that. You see, why, why David Drew wanted to get this going was that he feels that Bobby hasn't had quite enough adulation as the adulation stakes go. And I think he's right there. And we feel the same about this, Sir Arthur. Mm. I just think his music is tremendous, earthy and tuneful and riveting, mm. dynamically interesting, rhythm rhythmically interesting. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about these hands, the El Greco hands. No. And I think that we could have a go at it again now. I think, you know, we could make it, it would need very careful rehearsing and it would need, need a, I didn't have to, time to put all the detail I'd like, obviously, mm -hmm. put in today because I had to get some of it on its feet. But it, it needs careful, um, dramatic detail. Uh, we believe that eventually we are going to be able to bring together a very faithful reenactment of what that first ballet performance was. <laughs> Thank you. 
If it's values like this, the oddities, the curiosities, the ones which are not the mainstream pieces, those which are not really about steps at all, but about something which perhaps is deeper than that, are very important because they flesh out the repertoire of a company. If we can succeed in doing this, then it may be possible for this ballet to be staged again. And with any luck, keep our fingers crossed, it may happen. Thank you.